Well, once again, this uh, camera of mine is a very uh, <laughs> teaching me a lot of patience. Um, I don't know if you, if you if it comes up in the recording that I just had a pop up that popped up for a second, but it was only for a second, so it doesn't really matter. But anyways, I was. Uh, going through the story of Matthew 18, 21 to 35, and Matthew 6, 14 and 15, which corroborate the same principle, which is forgiveness. Um, now, as I was saying, I didn't get that far too into it, so it's, it's not too bad. At least it wasn't <laughs> that bad to start over again. But anyways, I was going through forgiveness, and I'm um, also saying that um, medical professionals have actually found there's a link between unforgiveness and and bitter, which obviously is the root of bitterness and resentment, and um, also the the negative health side effects that come from um, holding on to unforgiveness, which again is the root of bitterness and resentment, um, that can cause major health problems for people. It can cause cancer. It can cause, yeah, it's a, it's a major cause of cancer, but it can call, also cause, like, um, stress and uh, anxiety. And um, it just, it just, it's really bad for your health to hold on to unforgiveness. Um, and, of course, Jesus knows that. Um, but the other um, huge problematic issue with unforgiveness is, like, well, think of it just for example. If, if you're a Christian... Um, and this message is for Christians because obviously, uh, well, the unbeliever wouldn't give a crap about um, forgiveness. Well, not necessarily, but uh, the, the unbeliever doesn't understand forgiveness as the Christian would. It's probably a better way of saying it. Um, because we have this unbelievable mercy given to us by the, our Heavenly Father who has given to us his Son who has paid complete forgiveness of sin, our sin on the cross. So, you know, Jesus, one of the things Jesus said when he, was, uh, when he walked this earth was freely you, have, freely you have received, freely give. Now, freely we have received forgiveness, and so freely give forgiveness, like, pour, like make it a habit. Make it, like, just... Even if people don't repent, like just forgive. Now, it may be the case, and I've had a case in my life, some case in my life, where if forgiveness didn't happen, there would be no reconciliation. Um, which wasn't, to, which isn't to say that I don't forgive or I didn't forgive, but there may be times where if there's no forgiveness, then there's no reconciliation in the relationship, because there's that there could be something going on in and the brokenness of the relationship that would require uh, forgiveness um, for the relationship to be restored. Um, that's a different topic, okay? But um, so I'm going to get into again uh, Matthew 18, um, parable of the unforgiving servant, um, which is an incredibly powerful um, uh, parable. Well, I mean, every parable that Jesus told was powerful in, in their own right, but. Um, I'm just going to focus on this one for the sake of uh, this topic because it's a very telling um, parable uh, for many reasons. Um, so I'm going to start again at uh, Matthew, sorry, verse 21 of Matthew 18. And I'm going to read it through the end of the chapter to uh, 35, okay? So, starting at verse 21 of Matthew 18, Peter comes up to Jesus and says, they came to him, so I am kind of paraphrasing. So then Peter came to him, who is Jesus, and said, "Lord, how often shall I forgive my brother sin against me? And so how, how often shall I forgive my brother sin against me? And I forgive him up to seven times." Then Jesus said to him, "I do not say to you up to seven times, but to seventy times seven. Therefore, the kingdom of heaven is like a man who wanted to settle his accounts with his servants, and when he began to." And when he be, had begun to settle accounts, one was brought to him who owed him 10,000 talents, which just if you if you want to figure, it's, it's, I've done the research, is about a billion dollars in today's currency, so keep that in mind. Um, 
He was not able to pay, but as he was not able to pay, the master commanded that he be sold with his wife and children, and that all he had, and that payment be made. The servant therefore fell down before him, saying, Master, have patience with me, and I will pay you all. Then the master of that servant was moved with compassion, released him, and forgave the debt. Okay. But that servant went out and found one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred denarii, which is about the equivalent of three months of wages back then. So just keep that in mind that this guy who was just forgiven a debt of 10,000 talents, which again is about the equivalent of a billion dollars in today's currency, went after a guy who owed him a hundred denarii, which was again the equivalent of about three months of wages back then. So keep this in mind. So that servant went out and found one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred denarii, and he laid hands on him and took him by the throat, saying, Pay me what you owe. So his fellow servant fell at his feet and begged him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will pay you all. But he would not, but went out and threw him into prison till, all, till he should pay the debt. So when his fellow servants would have done, that's the servants of the master who had forgiven his debt of 10,000 talents, saw what had done, they were grieved, very grieved, and came and told their master all that had been done. Then his master, after he had called him, said to him, You wicked servant, I forgive all that debt because you begged me. Should not you have also had compassion on your fellow servant just as I had on you? And his master was angry and delivered him to the tortures until he should pay all that was due to him. So my heavenly Father also, so my heavenly Father also will do to each of you, from his heart does not forgive his brother's trespasses. I'm just going to quickly uh, turn over to Matthew six, fourteen and fifteen, which is a corroborating passage in terms of uh, forgiveness. Matthew 6, 14 and 15 says, For if you forgive men their trespasses, which is sin, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you not, do not forgive men their trespasses, neither will your heavenly Father forgive your trespasses. Alright, so, you know, this is a quite a powerful um, parable um, concerning forgiveness in Matthew 18, um, from 21 to 25. So, I just want to go through this and kind of unpack it, if you will. So, first of all, you have Peter. So, this, this, this entire parable is a response to a question that uh, Peter asked the Lord Jesus, which is, how, how often, how many times should I forgive my brother who sins against me? Up to seven times? Now, you may think, well, that's a pretty small amount of time to forgive someone. But you have to understand... In Jewish culture at the time, they had kind of a, a, what they what they would have what we would call a three strike rule, meaning if someone for, sins against you twice, okay, you might forgive them, but the third time that that's it, they're out. Like that's it, we're done. So, however, Peter arrived at the number of seven. We have to cut him some slack and and, and just understand that according to Jewish culture at the time, he was actually being quite gracious in his estimation of what he considered a generous amount of forgiving somebody. But of course, Jesus blows it out of water by responding to him, I say to you not seven times, but 70 times seven times, which is 490. Now, of course, the implication of what Jesus was saying is forgive and keep on forgiving. Now, we also have to understand as Christians that um, God has forgiven us an unpayable debt, which is our sin debt. Um, and this is the and this is and this is the the point that Jesus is making in the story that the master who has forgiven this servant of this unpayable debt of ten thousand talents, which again it equates to about a billion dollars in today's currency, um, represents the heart of the heavenly Father who forgives us an unpayable debt, which is our sin debt. And then to think of the audacity, the arrogance. The pride to go and be forgiven of this unpayable sin debt and go to someone who has wronged us in some way, shape, or form and hold that person um, and, like, not forgive them, right? So you have to think about it. 
We have been forgiven. If we have been forgiven an unpayable sin, sin debt, and there's nothing we could do from now to the rest of eternity to make amends for the sins that we've committed against God or and our people. There's nothing. And so it's a really egregious and outrageous and it really angers the heart of God when he takes into account the forgiveness that he's lavished graciously and mercifully unto us in the person of his son, the Lord Jesus Christ, who died in atonement for our sins, and that we have the audacity to hold people's sins that they've committed against them. It's insanity. It's arrogance. It's pride. And so, but the other thing I was saying is like this whole issue of unforgiveness comes with a whole host of other issues, which is, again, I've said, it, it creates Bitterness and resentment, which, by the way, does can lead to up to and including things like cancer, but it starts out with anger and pride. Like, I've seen someone I used to work with take an offense for something I did, even though I didn't do it quite anything wrong, but he just took it the wrong way. And just now that I'm talking about it, I'll just be, I'll just tell you what I did. So, first of all, he, I, w I was lead hand for, or l team leader for the day, and that my, um, our team, our, my, our team leader had the day off, and so they gave me his radio for the day because I'm, I'm, I'm one of the only people who speak English as the first language on the line, and I have the confidence to communicate, and communication comes naturally for me, of course, because English is my first language. But I also have the confidence to communicate with people. Um, no problem. I have I'm a confident person, and God has given me that confidence, okay? Secondly, the only other person who speaks English as a first language doesn't want the responsibility, so they gave me his radio. Now, one of the issues that I had, and he was told a couple times, that you know, um, if you bring, okay, we're making, we make, uh, when I was working there, so we, that, that factory specifically makes non-bread, and one of the requirements is when you take out um, a, a, an ingredient that ha, that is a, uh, what do you call it, it's a, it's a perishable ingredient, like buttermilk or egg, if you will, we're supposed to put um, a tag on it that marks the information regarding that particular ingredient. Um, and he didn't do that, and he was told about this a couple times. It only takes maybe 20 seconds or so to write the information out and stick it on the tag, and one of the reasons that this is important is that QA, when if QA comes around and sees that there's no sticker on the thing, that we get docked, we get marks against us for it. So I had told him um, time, I, first time, one time I gave him a sticker, and told him to put it on, and then I saw it like half an hour, 45 minutes later, I'm like, <sighs> so like, it, I, I felt like he wasn't respecting the authority that had given me that day, and I was a little upset about that, so I told, took it to the office. Now, later in the day, I, also, I was about to give him a sticker, and then he just blew his stack at me, and said, don't hire me, oh. and then I went to the office again, and reported him for being um, abrasive. And um, and so he had the next day off, and then I saw him the next, the next time. I said, good morning. And so, you know, he took it personally, but the reason I had reported him is because I just, I, I really wanted him to improve, and I didn't, that was at the point where I didn't think this guy was actually going to improve unless someone actually said something. So it wasn't personal, like he's a nice guy, but when it comes to work, he needs to, um, Knock it up a, a, pick it up a notch, if you will. So, and then, but he, he took it really personally, and he became really bitter, and said, like, oh, that's, for now on, I'm just going to report every little thing that he does, which, of course, is incredibly petty. Um, and for a little while, like, even if I was doing something right, like one time I went by, and, and I was going back anyway, so, and I noticed they had a skid wrapped and ready to go to the back, so... 
as I was going back, I just took it to the back with me, and he's like, what are you doing? It's not, it's, it's not your job. Just leave it there. And I'm like, <laughs> I kind of looked at him like, what's going on with you? And then one time, uh, he got angry with me about something else. I can't remember. But it was, it was, it was incredibly, like, minor and, like, wasn't worth getting upset about. But I know that what hap was happening was he was, he took offense and then it created bitterness and resentment within his heart and soul, which was, it, would be, and again, was, and the reason I'm mentioning this is because it brings me back, to, brings up another point, which is when you take on unforgiveness and a spirit of offense and bitterness and resentment that come along with it, it clouds your judgment in the way you see people, especially the person or people that you have an issue with. And that's so that creates a, a mental, emotional issue within your psyche that clouds judgment. Now, one of the things that people bring to you will have brought to me, and this is a common thing that people bring when it comes to forgiveness, is well, they don't deserve it. Well, okay, but that's kind of besides the point. You don't deserve God's forgiveness and grace either, nor do I. <laughs> okay, making that very I don't could, but God gr lavishly gr um, lavishly pours to us and mercifully gives to us the the forgiveness of God and Christ that we have through the atonement of what Jesus has done for us, and so to turn around and hold unforgiveness about so against other people, again, really angers and grieves the hearts of God, the heart, heart of God, sorry. Um, and again, it's not, it's not about whether or not they deserve it, but it's about you um, being free from um, unforgiveness. It's like, you know, I've heard, I don't know if you may, have, may or may not have heard the expression, but like bitterness is like drinking poison, expecting other people to get sick. And I told this guy, listen, if you go down, continue to go down this road, it's going to destroy you. And he, and he went to the office and reported me because he thought I was like trying to get a fire, which wasn't the case. What what I meant was it, it, he's hitting the self-destruct button on his life and he doesn't even realize it. Um, but then I told that, I told that to the office. And they thought, well, okay, well, that's not what I meant. But prob I probably should have been clear when I said that to the guy. And, and I should have said, listen, I don't mean this as a threat, but I mean, like, you're, you're going to destroy yourself if you keep keep going down this road. But, you know, I just didn't respond to the, when he was getting angry at me or upset with me. And, um, I, made, and I just kept being myself. And, you know, he, he never came back around to being friendly with me. But, you know, I, again... I wasn't, I didn't do anything wrong, and it wasn't personal against him, I just, and again, he was a nice guy, I just wanted him to, well, everyone wanted him to really pull up, pull this, pull like, stop slacking around, stop, you know, he was a very minimalist, I don't know if he still is, but a very minimalist work, work, working person, I mean, he would only do the minimum amount of effort required of him, and he wouldn't help his teammates, and wouldn't go the extra mile, which was really getting on everyone's nerves, myself included. Um, so, and again, you know, it's just, but again, the, the, the reason I'm bringing him up is more so to, to give a practical example of what happens when you take on a spirit of offense and take in the root of um, unforgiveness and bitterness and resentment, um, pull up into someone's heart and mind and how that affects their thinking patterns and, and behavior that's why that's the more or less that's the reason i'm bringing this 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 uh, story up to give a practical application to how bitterness and forgiveness play um in, a, in, in regular life now um so yeah so it has it has emotional and psychological and mental and again it kind of like it kind of it put it's like putting blinders on and you only see people through the root of unforgiveness and bitterness and listen i've been there myself it's it's a really just self-destructive path to be on um but when you you have to you just have to start praying through it and you know over you know god will work through this and and, and it will come to pass um you have to let the whole the work of the holy spirit work through you 
just forgive people. And then when, if you've done wrong to people, take the high road and ask them to forgive you. Um, which, you know, it really, really, were, and do it quickly. Like, you know, most of us, we all know when we've done wrong to people and then just so make amends quickly and just apologize quickly and, of course, sincerely. Um, I've had to do that many times in my life, apologize to people. Um, but if it's done sincerely and it's done quickly, it's usually, it usually goes over well. And if you do it quickly, you know, and if I've had times or, you know, especially at work where if, it, if I don't sleep well, then I, I, I literally have to tell myself if I'm working on a day that I haven't slept well the night before, I have to tell myself to be careful because I know my patience has, uh, is short and thin when I don't sleep well. If I sleep well, like most of the time, if I sleep well, I'm, I'm, I'm a very patient man and I don't get easily upset or angry. Um, and again, that's the work of the Lord in my life. I was, have not always been a very a patient person. I guarantee you that much. And everyone who knows me well can attest to the fact that I have not always been a patient person. I've not always been easy to be around, but uh, I am now. So, you know, as Paul says, I'm a new creation in Christ. All old things have passed away, all things have been made new, so that is reflective of my life. And again, that's not my doing, that's the work of the light, Lord in my life. Okay, so God gets all the glory in both my salvation and my sanctification. Make that very clear right now. And so let's just make it um, make it very clear that um, forgiveness is uh, one of the core principles of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And that if you're living in unforgiveness, then... You need to repent, either to God and or to people that you've wronged. But if people have wronged you and you're holding on to unrepent and un un unforgiveness against them, then you need to bring it to the Lord and repent because you're living in sin. Plain and simple. Okay, so again, forgiveness is extremely important. Even if you're not a Christian, it's still important because you're holding... Um, you're holding yourself back and you're living in bitterness and it's nothing good comes from living in unforgiveness whether you're a believer or not but if you're a believer then you really got no excuse because you have the word of God <laughs> and you know as these passages that I've read from Matthew 18 and Matthew 6 um, you have no reason at all to hold unforgiveness against anybody for considering that you, if you take into account what God and Christ has done for you and me. And that's the gist of this message. You know, it's not complicated. It's not, yeah, it's definitely not complicated. It's simple. It's not always easy to do. I understand that. And again, it's not about people deserving it, because listen, not, nobody, my, you or me or anybody, on this planet, deserves the forgiveness that we have through God and Christ, through the atonement of what Christ has afforded to us on the cross. But, you have been forgiven in Christ. Now go and forgive other people who sin against you. There is no reason at all, no excuse whatsoever, to hold on to unforgiveness to anybody who's wronged you, regardless of what they've done. And I promise you, you will have no peace at all if you choose to live in unforgiveness. It creates bitterness and resentment, which comes with emotional problems, mental problems, psychological problems, and physical problems. And God says don't, to, don't do it. So if you're doing it, it's not only causing all those problems, but you're living in sin. And God wants you to be free from unforgiveness so you can live in right relationship with him. And that's the crux of it, folks. All right. That's it for now. Peace out, Brother Rob.